Hello, folks out there. This episode of the podcast is partnered by Audible. Greg, you know what I love about Audible? What do you love about Audible, I John? don't have to pick up a book anymore and carry it around with me. In fact, I carry it around in my phone, which is amazing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They literally keep thousands of titles right on your phone, accessible at any time, when you're driving, when you're cooking, when you're mowing the lawn, changing a diaper, doesn't matter. It's all right there at your fingertips, John. They've got podcasts, they've got lectures, they've got some like health and wellness and like fitness series on there that if you just are looking for something to fill that gap, like you're not getting into a book right now, it's all there for you, man. If you're a member, Greg, what's cool about it is you get three titles per month. The first one, you can pick whatever you want. Like I've said, I'll probably start hitting up some of those health and wellness books. And then what's awesome is they have two Audible exclusives exclusives folks you can't get it anywhere else it's true that is very true so if you guys want to get on the audible train you can go to audibletrial.com slash j-a-t-g that stands for johnny and the greg hook, hook yourself up with a 30-day free trial no promises, no nothing. If you don't like it, which I can't imagine you're not going to like it. Um, it, you can cancel at any time. But the great thing about that is the books you get during your free trial or if at any time, those books are yours. Like you get to keep them. You can listen to them nonstop, anytime, all the time. Sounds like a deal to me, man. So if you guys are smart, like I know you guys are, because you already listened to this podcast, sign yourself up, guys. What do you got to lose? It's 30 day free trial and it's books. It's knowledge. Got to drink it up. It is. So one more time, it is audibletrial.com slash J-A-T-G. Oh, it is good to be back. That's the radio voice. That's how I would always come in if we were doing radio. Yeah. You know, be like, yeah. better than ever, back again, Johnny and the Greg, here we go. That's, I, I have an issue with radio voice versus, because I, I, I found out a guy that I knew in high school is now a DJ, and I like checked out a show. And every time he talks, he's kind of just really pronouncing a lot of his stuff. And I'm like, whoa. <laughs> that is not well, I think that most talks. podcasts are knocking that out now <clears throat> yeah um, thank god yeah it uh <laughs> i think it was family guy that did like a parody of that where it's like it was like uh somebody like danny and the yuck or something like that and they just kept going they just kept doing sound effects <laughs> so i think somebody knows what i'm talking about with that anyway hey i am back um apologies to everybody that listened to the podcast last week we had audio problems i didn't know how bad they were until i listened to it um we had some situations with just it was just um just one of those john it's growing pains we'll fix it for the next one yeah so um we're stuck you're stuck with us today guys so sit back relax enjoy yourselves because we're going to get down and talk about some fun stuff First and foremost, Greg, I was on vacation. You were on vacation. We haven't actually talked in a while, so this could be a long show where we're just going to cover a lot of shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This might be our, I call it usually our topic storm, but this <clears throat> might be a hurricane. This might it just could be. be. It could be. Yeah. So I was vacation. It was great. It was awesome. We, uh, uh, I didn't know what to expect. We went down to the Florida Keys, which wasn't at all what I expected it to be. Really? I, I, yeah, I expected it to look like Cancun, I think. Like, water that you could look down and see your feet without and it's and like, not no unless i caught it unless we caught it the bad season where it was uh very cloudy very huh. um uh not rough but cloudy and there was a lot of vegetation floating all over the place mm, okay so it was very weedy very um in some places it really smelled I wonder like, if it's just where you were at in the Keys. Maybe, maybe. Well, we were in Key West, which is the farthest oh, you can okay. get. That's that's the most n- southern <laughs> point in the United States. Yeah. So yeah. Um, that was cool to say I did that. Uh, Ursula got barbecued first day at the beach. Really? Barbecued. Horrible. Wow. She's peeling like a lizard. A little red tomato, huh? 
Oh yeah, she was really bad. A little really. Polish tomato. Yeah, it was hard too because um, you know, when you're at the beach and it's one of those days where it's really breezy, mm, mm-hmm. you don't get the idea. You, you don't feel it. it. Yeah. Yep. Um, we thought we put on enough <clears throat> sunscreen. Ursula doesn't do sunscreen, so that's her fault. That's your. That's her fault. I didn't feel. Oh, sorry. she's way too yeah. old. Uh, yeah. Yeah, to, I know. to make that mistake. I know. She or she, when she puts on sunscreen, it's like, it's like oil. I put on sunblock. Yeah, like she puts on tanning stuff. Yeah, she puts on SPF fifteen or something. Yes, like exactly. I put on like a hundred and fifty. <clears throat> don't touch me, like sun. Don't touch me, especially yeah. if I'm, I'm going to be out all day where the sun's reflecting off. The just ocean. looks like cream cheese going on. Just a yes, nice yes, layer I'm of. Totally fine with it. Yeah. So. Um, I don't need to look tan. I don't know. Did you ever get, did you ever feel like you needed to look tan? Um, not need. I was a lifeguard for half of high school. So yeah. I tanned up well, like, right. But I mean, like you didn't physically go look for it, right? Like, oh, no, shit. the, the yeah. only time in my life where I said I need to look tan and I don't know why I thought this was for my wedding. So I, I bought a package of like five tanning sessions and went to the awkward thing, bed. That? Yeah, it totally was. I mean, yeah, they put you in this little like roofless room. Yep. And you know, in the in the roofless room next to you is a naked woman. And you're just like, or okay, man. well, no, they or were man. all women where I was. Okay. <clears throat> did you go in like, naked or did you go in with underwear on? Well, they told me they're like, no, you just go in naked. Like that was the. And I was like, oh, really? really? Wow. Okay. So yeah, I. I'm Did you sure. burn your Peter? No. Okay, no, that's good. Because I enjoy putting on the suntan lotion too much. Sorry for all the Peters out there listening. That's <clears throat> my my penis. No, penis. I did, not, did not get burned. I took care of that. So yeah. I put one of those little goggle things on there. So it was just like a little. Hat. Yeah, uh, I I did that for a time because I don't I don't know why I did it. I just know I I went there with Ursula, and the first day I did it. I really burned like I yeah. didn't it was it was really bad like it was the worst burn I've ever had in my life and it was burned all over me so I felt like I couldn't walk I was uh-huh. peeling everywhere and I hear that's the worst thing you can do to your skin is burn it to the point where it peels off that's the yeah. worst thing you can do to your skin and it makes sense but I usually uh, get like one good sunburn a year yeah. and that and you just because in the same situation, like I'm out doing yard work in like late spring, it's breezy. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not wearing a hat, anything like that. And then I'm like, yeah. I come back in and my family goes, ooh, you, you didn't wear anything, did you? Or you didn't wear a suntan. So as a bald man, are you very conscious of your head exposed <clears throat> to the sun or no? Yeah, I am. I mean, it's, uh, it's one of those things. All you need is a, a, a couple rounds of a, like, like a sunburn, like a yeah. red top sunburn on your head. And that's, you're like, okay, yep, I'm going to make sure to cover up or put on suntan lotion or something because, yeah. or sunscreen. Because, I mean, and even, I even have like special stuff made for domers, you know, bald mm-hmm. guys that just mm-hmm. spritzes on so it's not like slathering it on. But, uh, yeah, I mean, and when you're, and you're talking about peeling, I mean, when your head peels and you're bald, you can't hide that shit. I mean, you're just like, flaking off in the middle of a business meeting you're like oh that sucks i can't do that yeah <laughs> that's true yeah i i'm peeling on one small part that i must have missed mm-hmm. um i didn't feel it i still didn't feel it. i just started itching it last night i was like why am i itching my lower back right where the lower back meets the butt cheek i was like why mm. is this itchy and i looked at it i'm peeling like about this much of peel <laughs> and i'm like how did i miss that but anyway um so uh, we really enjoyed the ocean. Um, but the biggest, the best thing that happened at, uh, my vacation, I think I text you about it was I taught my daughter how to swim, which was so cool. Cause she is so, she was so hesitant and so scared of the water. Mm-hmm. And when you see like, it's like that, that light bulb of confidence struck yeah. on and she's like, Oh my God, I can do this. I can actually kick. I can actually move forward. I can actually like move in this stuff. And if water gets on my face, I don't freak out. If it gets in my eyes, I just do this and wipe it away. So that was probably one of 
the first I've, I hope of many experiences I've had where I felt like an actual superhero and I felt like a dad, I felt like a real <clears throat> dad. Like, you know, there's always those, um, pictures or, or those, uh, advertisements or those movies or those shows where the dad's teaching the kid how to ride a bike Yeah, or he's teaching it. That was, that was a really cool moment. Mm-hmm. I was, uh, I was tickled to death. I was on a high and, uh, it was really cool. It was really cool. Do you have access to a pool down way, like a public pool or like a friend who has a pool? Or... Funny you say that. No. Really? Um, what happened was my uh, aunt bought us a one of those pools that are like 10 foot in radius and about 20 oh, feet sure. just like, deep. Like an inflatable kind of deal? Yeah, but it, it's super, it's it's like a, it's it's like once you put it up, it's up for the summer. And yeah, I where are you going to put that in your yard? No, I, I don't think we're going to do it. I don't, I don't, I just. I look at that and I see work. Well, yeah, any pool is. I mean, it comes with a filter, so I'm going to have to change the filter. I'm going to have to do, you know, do all of this stuff that I'm not sure I want to do because we just, uh, she's two right now, right? So we just bought a, like a $50 blow up inflatable pool that she can jump in. And then when she, when she's done for the day, I can dump it out. And not only that. That the pool my aunt bought me, which by the way, if my aunt listens to this, we are very grateful for it. I just not sure I want to put the work involved. It's a big thing. Yeah. Yeah. Cause it has like a thousand, <clears throat> I read it, it has like a thousand, 1045 gallons of water. Where am I yeah. going to empty that every Sunday? It won't be every Sunday. Like you're saying, it, you put it, you put it up and it's yeah. up for yeah. a long time. Exactly. And so either we put it up on our patio, which then takes up the patio. Or we put it on the grass, which then kills the grass. Right. And you've been in our backyard. Like, we don't have real any other yeah. place to put right. it. Right. Right. So I think I think we're going to give it back to my aunt, have her take it back. Um, and we're just going to deal with the pool where, you know, she's plays in it for three hours. She's done. I, I you know, dump mm-hmm. it down. I dump it out and I roll it up and we pull it out next weekend. No big deal. If I, I have, We had one inflatable one. And as I was mowing the lawn, I misjudged the distance that the exhaust shoots out. And it melted one whole side and just went whoosh, just down. I was like, okay, yep, all right. Oh, really? Yeah, so be careful. Yeah, I definitely will. I didn't even think about that. Mm -hmm. Um, After that, it was just hard plastic pools. Yeah. Like the... Uh, you know what's really cool in Florida? In Florida, they have lizards. I mean, I, I'm sure you know this. You've seen them on sticking on the side of walls. And stuff. But you took a picture, and there is a big lizard, like on your deck or something, right? Big iguanas. Yeah, big. I didn't know they climbed trees, which makes sense now. But oh, I sure. didn't know they yeah. did it. Like we walked out on the third level, um, to go to the pool, and he's sitting on a pine, not yep. pine. He's sitting on a palm tree leaf, like a branch. Mm-hmm. I thought, holy shit, he, he, and they're big. Yeah. Um, very fast. I, I, you know, anytime I watch an animal move, I always think about like, what would it be if like we could move like that? Like the yeah. effortless, the, the speed that in which mm-hmm. they can move from point A to point B or how he can climb up a tree without any effort at all. Um, that was cool. Having Gwen see, these giant lizards were, were was pretty cool. So, but overall, we had a great time. We um, you were, we were there for a the wedding. With, yeah. yeah, we went to a wedding. Uh, Gwen had a great time being the flower girl and getting all the attention. You can mm-hmm. tell she's already about like, oh, the spotlight. This is kind of cool. You know? <laughs> um, so she starts. She's starting to suck that up. Um, but overall, it was a great trip. Um, I just really enjoyed getting out of the house and being with my my family and hanging out with our extended family. So mm-hmm. it was it was a lot of fun, a lot of fun. What'd you do while I was gone? Uh, same old, same old. I guess. Yeah, uh, yeah. Well, and it, I mean, you're taking sending me pictures of Florida, and it was like we had like another cold snap here. Oh, did you really? Was, yeah, it was like uh, like highs in the 40s a couple times and you're like this sucks oh when we came home it was 42 and rainy yeah yeah Yeah. that was that was most time you were gone and then finally we kind of warmed up uh later part of the week here but the wind has been really bad up here oh yeah the wind's been horrible down here it was like i could at one point i was watching the 
I didn't even know if you were back yet or not, but watching the weather and pretty much right at that Wisconsin, Illinois border, it was yeah. like forties and fifties up by us. And you guys were in like the seventies, like 60, seventies and some place eighties. And I'm like, wow. So yeah. whatever that cold snap was, it came pretty sure from Canada, fucking Canada. Um, but it just kind of reached down and then got to Illinois and said, now nah, we're good. Yeah. So, that's weird. Um, we were walking yesterday and the wind was so bad. Like I had to, I was getting pushed back mm-hmm. and I was thinking to myself, I, I can't remember the last time I got pushed by wind, by mm-hmm. actual wind, you know? And it was funny too, cause we were watching shadow and bone. We just started two episodes. We haven't finished any of it yet, but we saw how there's these me- wizards or Grishas or something like that. They're yeah. Called. Grishans. Yeah, and how the first time I you knew they existed was <clears throat> the guy was like, "You want, let's uh, you know, why don't you fight me?" And then he started whipping the wind around, and I thought to myself, "Wind? Who gives a shit?" And then I got <laughs> and then I got hit with a gust of wind yesterday, and thought, "Whoa, okay, wait a minute!" Like, kind of puts that in perspective. Have you um, have you ever watched Avatar, the Air Last of the Airbenders uh, from Nickelodeon show? Um, no, I, I, for some reason I can't, <clears throat> I don't, I figured this out. I don't like the style of anime. Really? I don't know why. I don't like the, how they jump up in the air and it's like they're paws in the air screaming for such a long time and then they come down. Yeah. It's, it's not much like that. It's not like it's Dragon not. Ball. No. Okay. No. Um, I and, haven't watched Avatar, the last airbender, but I saw the beginning of the movie which I hear is oh, horrible. Oh, God, don't. I hear it's horrible, but I was I was like, okay, but I had to go somewhere, so I stopped yeah. watching it. <clears throat> no, but, the, the movie <clears throat> by M. Night Shyamalan. And Shyamalan. M. Night Shyamalan, yeah, uh, is terrible. Like, I don't know what he was doing, because I think he's a talented filmmaker, and, he, and he's proven that. But he, for some reason, wanted to put his own spin on that property. And you're like, you don't have to put any spin on it. The the show, the world has been made. Just just make that world in a live action setting. And he just didn't want to do it. You know what I like about that guy? He takes chances. He does. Yeah. I mean, it's like I said, I like a lot of his other stuff. Right. Uh, but that's just just one where you're like, ooh, nope. Well, yeah, that, that's that would be like taking like Spider-Man and saying, you know what? <clears throat> let's make spider-man i don't know like let's make him old or like like ruining the ruining what makes spider-man yeah Spider-Man, i mean you know? e- even to the point of let's take all that well the other thing they try to do is he tried to do too much he tried to take too much uh he bit off more than you can chew and yeah the source material and try to squeeze it into like an hour and a half movie and you're like, like you're taking right. five Harry Potter novels and put them into one. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. it's like that kind of mistake. And yeah, he augmented some of the bending powers and you're like, no, that's, that's not what it is. Like you didn't need to change that. So it yeah. was weird, kind of weird, but yeah. anyway, it's really good. I mean, it's, there are episodes that are epic and then there are still episodes that you're like, Oh, this is a Nickelodeon show that where their target market was kids. So yeah. okay. you've got those in there. Or even like instances in a show where something comes up and you're like, okay, that's yeah. off. But overall, it's a great series. Speaking of speaking of like intense animation, man, that Invincible show. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Did I knew what it? was coming. I, yeah, I finished it. I knew what was coming, <clears throat> yeah. but I didn't know it was coming like that. Like, I was like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, I'm yeah. sitting there. And what I was really impressed with, and poor Ursula, we're, we're taking the walk yesterday, and I am just verbally, like, I'm, um, like, giving her word vomit on how much I loved Invincible. Yeah. And she yeah. saw the first episode, and she was like, what? Why? No, I don't want to watch this. This is horrible. <laughs> um, but I was I was really shocked at the... I think they did a very good job animation wise of having you actually care about that, that last episode, yeah. having you watch that and care about it and go, mm-hmm. Oh man, holy cow. So, um, if any of you don't know what we're talking about, the invincible show on Amazon prime, it's, it's animation. 
Um, I said cartoon. Greg corrected me once. In oh, no. Animation. Yeah. Um, because it's not for kids. Let's be very clear on that. It is definitely not. not for kids. It's not It's not for some adults. And then what I mean by that, right. I mean, it is very violent and there's blood. Um, <laughs> yeah. If you're timid, um, it's yeah. not for you. Yeah. There's stuff that just, you're like, oh, 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 wow. You know. Um, At the same time, I mean, technically, I think it's some of the best animation that i've seen in the last couple of years yeah i mean I, it's right up there i mean if hopefully it gets like an emmy or or something because or even golden globes it, it's that good yeah, yeah i think it's it an excellent it's an excellent um excellent series i was really pleased with it and i'm pleased to announce i'm not like this isn't breaking news or anything but i read that they uh got renewed for season two and three so we'll see two how. and three yeah yeah so those, the writers, the artists, the voice talent, congrats. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. It was really fun. So we started talking about Shadow and Bone. I want to go back to that because I do so, want to say congratulations to Christina Strain, who's one of the writers of the show and someone who I've met uh, at Comic-Con. She started off, uh, I think she was doing Spider-Man at the time, uh, like as a colorist. Mm-hmm. And then, and then uh, you know, started doing some writing uh she was pretty pivotal uh she's got a great run on generation x uh which is the x-men book where it's like teenagers she she returned jubilee to her uh her glory more or less oh, okay and uh did a great job and then she she left comics and was writing the show the magicians uh was one of the uh story editors and writers did a great job there she wrote a, a movie for netflix called finding ohana which Unfortunately, I have yet to watch, but I hear it's really good. Um, and then when I heard that she was into Shadow and Bone, which is based off of a book series, mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, this will be cool. And sure enough, yeah, it was. It, it is yeah. So cool. you watched all of Shadow and Bone? We did. My wife and I, uh, we started watching like the <clears> first <throat> episode and then I had to, I had to do something where I like walked away from the TV and next thing I know, she's three episodes in and she's like, you need to catch up. And I'm like, oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And so I caught up and then we started like every night. I think we were killing two episodes until we finished it. So, wow. Yeah. Um, so far for the first two episodes, I know they're, <clears throat> they're world building. So there's a lot of. Correct. Yeah. Going, what is this? What is that? Why are they doing that? Why are they doing that? Oh, well, that's cool. Well, I, what's that mean? You know, so I understand I'm going to catch up to it. The one thing I got to say, and I've been watching a lot of supernatural magic stuff lately. Mm hmm. I wish we could go back to dressing like that. Oh, sure. Like the Victorian. Yeah. Because we're watching The Nevers, too. I think you. Oh, great show. I love The Nevers. And Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's cool. I I mean, I like because I like cosplay. I don't do near as much of it as I would like to because, A, I don't think I'm that creative to try to piece something together. Like I would want to go buy like the entire outfit. Like I know people that piece it together or especially if it's like steampunk, they make it. And I'm not that kind of an artist, and I don't know how to do that. But um, it's like it's hot. Like that is like layers yes, upon yes. layers. Well, I mean, taking taking an idea of the Nevers that was that's based in London in the eighteen eighteen hundreds, seventeen hundreds, late eighteen hundreds, late eighteen hundreds, turn of the century. So I love that time period. I have always wanted to do something in that time period in terms of that, like write a story or create a comic era. book. Yeah. But I don't know anything about that era. And really? it takes you a while as you watch the Nevers. It <clears> takes <throat> you a while to understand what they're saying. You got to really listen to me. Yeah. For me, you got to really listen because it's, it's they do it very well, the accents and the, and the old English. And, mm-hmm. um, <clears throat> it's, uh, Hang on, we'll talk about the Nevers in a minute, but Shadow and Bone. Yeah. Um, we're still, uh, we're in episode, we just finished episode two, so again, again oh, we're, a ways. Yeah, we're world build. How many is it? Eight episodes? Eight episodes, yeah. Eight episodes. Have okay. they made it to the ship yet? And and the veil, I believe it's called? Have they made it there? No, I don't know what you're talking about. Good, because I'm not going to tell you anything then, because okay. I think it must be in the next episode it really makes some turns and you're like, Oh shit. All right. I like all the actors. So far. 
Yeah. Um, I, I think they did a good job. I, I don't know if they're true to the book or anything like that. I haven't invested in the book, but I think I, so. Cause okay. I follow Christina on Twitter and she is, Christina is a uh, Korean American and she said like, even in the book, when she first read the story and the main character being of kind of like a, uh, like a mixed Asian descent. Is that the problem? <clears throat> What do you mean? Is that the problem? Well, well, for the first two shows, she's acting like she's an yeah. outcast. Yeah, and I, her, her and I can't her, figure out why she's an outcast. Yeah, her and her friend are are outcast because of their race. I mean, that's that's is that what definitely it is? definitely the feeling you're getting. Yeah. Okay. And Christina really identified with that, and I was I like how it is weaved into the show because it's so like pertinent to what's going on right now with some of the the anti Asian racism and things like that, and. Mm-hmm. It's timely. I mean, and of course, Netflix didn't know what was going to happen in in the social scape when they planned to release this show in spring of 2001. So it just seems real timely and kind of like one of those things you're like, wow, I wish a lot of people would watch this show so that they could and then reflect of like, oh, maybe I do have some, you know, stereotypes or or things like that. And, you know, certain people I would wish would watch it. And you're just like, ah, they would never watch this show, but I wish they would. Yeah. And then pull from it, like, what they're supposed to pull from it. Well, some people don't do that. Like, I know. I it's think weird. I have a feeling you and I can watch a show and you pick up on things that I have, I didn't even think about it. I was like, that's just a guy with a coat. What are you talking about? You know, mm-hmm. I don't know how I, we could tie that into an example, but what I'm saying is, I, I I think that's how a lot of people look at it. But then there are some people I look, I uh, listen to on YouTube that review a show and sometimes they explain it incredibly well. And so I go to them if I'm a little confused to see. And when they break it down, I'm like, I didn't even see that. Like I how is- you and I did that with the show monsters, which I did not watch the entirety of on Hulu. Because <clears throat> the first episode is that mom who like just really wants to get rid of her kid. Yes, yes. And yes. and I'm like, oh, in the end, the mom is the monster. And you're like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I didn't. You know what? We never finished that either. After no, the I, first I, episode, we're I done. watched the first episode. I'm like, if it's all gonna be like this, I don't think I can do it. <laughs> yeah, that's too heavy shit. This is too much. Yeah, yeah. I agree with you. I that. I feel like I want to go back to it, but uh, I feel like yeah, I feel I I agree with you. In fact, what I, I have, that. When I'm in that summer slump, I think I'll go back to it. Yeah, you know what I'm. You know what Ursula and I are going through right now. Sometimes we go through this slump of nothing satisfies us with eating. Like nothing. We're okay. not in the mood sure. for anything. We don't. We don't want to eat that. You know, but nothing is giving us a satisfying. And I'm finding that now with all these programs i can watch all these subscriptions i can watch Mm -hmm. nothing satisfying me i'm just like "Hmm." i'm sorry the nevers do but but that's what i mean do you think the bar has been raised on tv like i think even going back to what i used to enjoy in college like if you go back and rewatch for me i go back and rewatch like i try to rewatch buffy which i thought was amazing tv at the time couldn't do it and i'm like Kind of dated, kind of like interesting kind of, because I was of, thinking about going back to watching the, that again. The villain of the week thing, you're just like, mm, okay, yeah. you know, and it's because I'm not, I mean, I'm now 43, I don't identify with much of the characters anymore, other than Giles, who's like looking at Buffy, he's like, you, he's like, you're being a selfish little bitch. I mean, to paraphrase, but you're like, yeah, yeah she is. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so yeah, I think you said it, that because I almost a little different. Okay, no, I thought I had to sneeze. I don't. Sorry, allergies are attacking me too. By the way, when I came back up here, yeah, that's. <clears throat> I think that's part Excuse of the me. cough that I have all the time is allergies. Allergies? Yeah, I think so. Um, but yeah, so yeah. I'm sorry. We still keep going way off the track here. <laughs> Shadow and Bone. Middle. So far, I like it. Um, can you give us a synopsis of what really this show is about? Without giving it away? Oh, gosh. Um, There's a lot of different themes in there. I think one is just the connection that two people can have. Um, Because that that plays throughout of of her 
and Mal. Mal? Yep. And kind of how, how, kind of how you lose. I mean, you, that connection's always there. Like, you know, but you get lost in it somehow. It's kind of similar, and this is going to sound weird because they almost have a romantic relationship. Right. Uh, ours is not, but in the same fact that you and I have have had seasons of life where we just didn't talk to each other for months at a time. Uh, right. Sometimes I think even a year. Right. And then, but every time we would come back together, it was like, oh, here we are. It's Johnny and the Greg again. And, and they're without really skipping a beat. And, you know. Yeah. That, um, that how many, kind of. How many dude, friendships do you have like that? Right now? Um, two. I mean. Two. Yeah. You, yeah. you being one and you met my bed, my friend, uh, Dan. Yeah. Um, that's. Right. They'll look like you guys could be on the other side of the country. And if yeah. you called me and said, I need help. Okay. Let yeah. me figure it out. Yeah. Right. Um, fair is the other one for me. Mm-hmm. You and Farrah, like where we can just, it does not matter. I can pick up the phone and it's like, we just we're right back in like this, this flow. Yeah. Yeah. Where there's none of this disconnect <clears throat> of, well, I, dude, you I haven't talked to you in three years. What are you talking? Like, we, yeah doesn't matter um those are cool those are cool relationships to have Mm -hmm. Um, so that's that's definitely one of the themes um the other theme is like i said i brought up the race thing that's that's uh definitely plays into it uh class warfare is very much a thing the you know the aristocracy versus like peasants and things like that mm -hmm. and then how people can change their station in life and and what does that look like Hey, let me ask you a question with that. Is this a dystopian future or is this just an alternate land? I take it as just an alternate. Okay. Like, yeah, I mean, not, it's, it's not earth, like yeah. way in the past or way in the future. Right. It, this is just a fantasy setting. Or a, a multiverse, a different world. Okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. The Nevers. Yeah. If you yeah. guys haven't watched this on HBO Max, um, and you guys are uh, Victorian age, you're into superheroes, you're into powers, you're into uh, a good story. Actually, mm-hmm. this is a good show. It's really yeah. good, and I and I hate to pump it because it's 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 the baby of jo- uh, Joss, Joss. Yeah, it's another Wheaton. Joss Whedon who is not oh. our favorite person. No, no, but he put together. Which is weird too, right? Because the way I've heard he treats women, but he's always writing women as the heroes. Yeah. Like it's he's empowering. Really odd. So he must have this love hate relationship with his mother, I'm assuming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm assuming that. Um, but this is about pretty much, uh, it's about, you know, women that get not all it's it's about people that get touched they call it they're called the touch but there's this one scene in episode three uh it's the water scene there's a water water fight fight. scene water-based fight scene where a guy is his ability is that he doesn't ever break the surface tension of water right so if you guys can imagine this filming this now if you do this in a cart uh, if you did this in animation, it'd be easy. If you didn't CGI, it'd be easy. This, when they filmed this, and I, Ursula and I were so impressed with the fight scene that we watched the making of that fight yeah. scene. They have a little yeah. after. Behind yeah, the and it was really cool. Uh, if you guys can imagine out there, uh, the heroine is tossed into a river, and she's fighting a bad guy who does not break the surface tension of the water. So, so she's in the water. So he doesn't sink. Like, yes. Like he doesn't think he can't like turn the power off and dive into the water. He's just walking on the water. And if he is, if he falls, if he lays down, he's just laying on the water. Yeah. Yeah. So it's this really interesting. <clears throat> it's the mo. it's one of the, I can't, and I, maybe I'm prisoner of the moment. I probably am. It's probably the most creative fight scene I've ever seen. It's like in a creative. while. Sure. Yeah. Cause it, uh, if you guys haven't seen it, I'm sure they have it now up on YouTube. Go YouTube it. It's really cool. Mm-hmm. It's just cool. I'm not saying it's the best fight scene of all time, but it's a very creative uh, battle. Um, yeah. What I really liked about it is how within the battle, G- 
she starts off very much at a disadvantage. Yeah. Like, like she can't surface above the water without getting kicked in the face or mm-hmm. giving away her position or anything like that. And how the fight choreographer said, we're going to flip this. Yeah. And, and turn that disadvantage into her advantage. Right. And I'm not going to say much more than that, but um, yeah, it was just really, really creative, really well done. Yeah. Um, they intermix the practical effects with a CGI mm-hmm. almost seamlessly. Yeah. So I was, um, when I saw the making of it, I sat there and, and said, I didn't even know that was CGI. I yeah. had no idea. Kudos which to the is, yeah, which is cool. Um, and it's almost a shame now when you watch a show and they have shitty special effects, you're almost like, dude, did you even take time? Yeah. Like, did you even try? You know? So. And the answer is no. I mean, their budget just might not have been able to handle it. And and I even think of that as, you know, some really, really well done fan films that they just don't have the effects budget. So yeah, you're right. I just watched one the other day. Well, I saw a clip of one where it's Nightcrawler taking out some guys um, from the X-Men. Okay. And he's, I mean, his bamfing everywhere looked great. But like, the bad guys shooting their guns, you could tell it was just like the stunt guy sitting there shaking, yeah. shaking the prop gun, yeah. and then they CGI'd a, the, a poor CGI of like a muzzle flash. Right, yeah. Because they can't spend the money to have blank ammunition that they're actually going to fire. Right. And you're like, okay. I mean, and so that one of those things where you just got to take it with a grain as, of salt. As a fan film. Yeah. Like, as you have a to fan understand. Film, yeah. yeah, yeah. You have to understand. People just pouring their hearts into it with no expect to make anything back. Meanwhile, if a studio's putting that out, you're like, what the hell? Yeah, exactly. So. <laughs> exactly. So speaking of the times, um, what was your thought of um, Captain America and the Winter Soldier now? Whew. Okay. Um, overall, I'm going to say I didn't like the series. Okay. That it, it just didn't, nothing really resonated for me on a level that a normal Marvel property should. Mm-hmm. And, and to say, I don't know, like to me, it felt like a Netflix series, like what Netflix was putting out with Daredevil and Power Man. Hey, I'm hey, sorry. Hey, and hey, Luke Cage. Hey, and, hey, yes. Daredevil yes. was good. And that's why I'm saying it, it felt like it was on those levels, but would fall. It falls above Iron Fist. But I think be- definitely below Daredevil. And, I and and probably I would sandwich it between season one and season two of Luke Cage. In terms oh, see, of I, I didn't like I didn't like Luke Cage at all. I like the first season. The and I'll be honest. I'm going to be honest here, and people might hate me for this, and this <clears> might <throat> not be the popular thing to say. I think, I think honestly, it was because I couldn't resonate. I couldn't understand. I, 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 I think it was that. just a, it was a, I hate to say this, but I'm just going to say it. So uh, it, it was like a, it was a black show, and I couldn't relate to it. I couldn't understand. Like, I just, I just, I didn't care about the the struggles in Harlem. Like, <laughs> Well, no, I wouldn't. Okay, I wouldn't say you didn't care because you and I did talk about it. It's not that you didn't care; it's just we're not familiar with it. There, there's nothing for us to emotionally attach ourselves to, as you know, r- rural white kids. Yeah, <laughs> growing up. In, yeah, I mean, I I like the Wisconsin. idea of Luke Cage. I thought the way Brian Michael Bendis wrote him for a while, yeah, was pretty cool. But I, I even like the actor. That yeah. played Luke okay. Cage. I just, I was just like, eh. I liked a lot of different parts of it, but as a whole, it it was. I mean, the second season to me was, it was almost like more about the music and make you know fe- featuring different artists, musical artists. And I'm like, yeah, you're right. Is he gonna? I, mean, I also kind of feel like when I watch this? when I watch some of those shows, especially like Luke Cage and especially Iron Fist, I feel like okay, guys. We have eight or 13 episodes. We got to stretch this out when maybe you could have told the story in three. Yeah. Well, eight, you know, eight episodes. Yeah. Could have been six. <laughs> Something yeah. like that. And, and I just think that's. Yeah. And w- with Luke Cage, it was a lot of like, yeah, we know he's bulletproof. Can we can we get past the him just walking in a hallway getting shot? Yes. Like yeah. we got to we got to do something different. Yeah. <clears throat> so anyway, 
Anyway, back to Captain America. That's, that's kind of how I felt. I'm looking at it probably more as I'm hoping it's some kind of bridge to something else. Okay. Like, as we get more, I don't think Loki's, I don't think it's going to bridge into Loki, but no. I think it's going to bridge into like maybe Captain America 4. Is a lot of people talking about that right now. I think you it know, connects to Armor Wars that's coming out. <clears throat> yeah, maybe that. I Secret mean, Invasion, and I think they're going that direction. I think yeah. what's happening is maybe the MCU is splitting into two into two stories that connect. I think WandaVision and Loki and Spider-Man and kind Doctor Strange. Type yeah, that's all going to connect somehow, some way. And I think the other direction is going to connect a different way maybe so, i don't <clears throat> um, it's all speculative but right now it, if it doesn't bridge to anything i'm I'm just going to be disappointed in the series and yeah. if i see it as a bridge to something bigger i'll go yeah okay, okay sure i guess that we had to see that day. you know like the the ending the post ending where we're introduced to u.s agent mm-hmm. i think i think you were right when you said there's probably going to be a Thunderbolts piece coming up Somewhere. or some, yeah, something, something akin to Thunderbolts. And if you don't know what Thunderbolts is, it's like, it's like black ops Avengers with heroes that are not heroes. I mean, right. it's not the suicide squad, but it's ish. It's yeah. suicide squad ish. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> my thoughts on it. I always judge it off of basically, am I going to watch it again? I'm never going to watch that again. No. I have no. no interest in it. There's not really an action scene I want to watch again. There's not really a moment that I'm thinking, oh, I want to watch that again. That was cool. Nothing. I was very disappointed in the final fight between Sam Wilson and um, uh, Batrock. Like, yeah. That could have been awesome. The five minutes with Batrock and uh, Captain America and Captain America and the Winter Soldier was way better. Yeah. Yeah, it was. Um. I really enjoyed, like, when it when it was over, I said to Ursula, I said, I, I hope Bucky stays around because I like where he's going with this. And maybe there's some sort of redemption mm-hmm. story or maybe there's something down the line where, you know, <clears throat> he could be like, kind of like how Wolverine had those series where he would be the loner that goes into a town that's corrupt and he fixes it or whatever. Sure. I'm just... There, there's. I think there's more of Bucky. I just don't know where Bucky fits in the long scheme of things. It's really hard. Well, because even in the comics, he doesn't have like a greater no purpose. No, he doesn't. I think it would be cool if you saw what <clears throat> Bucky did, all the secret missions he did. Like maybe he had to hunt, but, hunt down Black Widow one day, or yeah, maybe. I'd say, but he'd be the bad guy, and they right. Don't but do that. anyway, I I I enjoyed that. Um, I enjoy the suit, the final suit. I like it because it was comet accurate, and that's cool. I always think when they can pull yeah, that yeah, off, and pull yeah, it, it was. works. Um, it works, but then at the same time, like because we were watching it with my kids, yeah, and and my son looks at me, he's like, "Wait, Wakanda made that for him?" Said, yeah. So they fixed his wings, but the best they could do was like a leather suit. Like the first suit in Black Panther was more advanced than what they gave Sam. Like they couldn't, they couldn't yeah. juice a brother up and give him like a better suit than just leather and wings. And I'm like, it's a good point. He's got a good point. <laughs> well, maybe they were keeping. Maybe there's like laws like you can't everything that Black Panther has in his suit. You can't give that other. I people. don't know. I don't know. But he he made a very good point of like, yeah, you know, yeah, they're they're just as advanced as Tony Stark. You know, right? They could have given him more than just the yeah the leather and repaired the wings. Yeah. I thought the, when he saved somebody from a hel- helicopter crashing on them, that yeah. was a cool moment. Um, but it was a moment. It was like two seconds, but it was cool. Um, but overall, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to probably watch WandaVision again, to be honest, probably mm-hmm. going to watch that again. Um, I don't think I'm ever going to watch this again. Unless there's something like, like you said, that connects it to something else. Um, I think taking Sharon Carter and turning her character the way they turned it, okay, I'm cool with it. Let's see yeah. where it goes. Um, 
it doesn't bother me. I'm not, I don't know anybody that's a diehard Sharon Carter fan. So I don't know if it well, was like really Sharon upset Carter about it. in the comics was dead for decades. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, it was, it wasn't until Ron Garney and Mark Wade brought her back in like the late nineties that she came back and she, she came back with like that big nineties hair, just, woof, just yeah. curls down in the middle of her back and caps like Sharon. And, and, you know, but that was like, she was dead and like had no bearing on anything. And then, then they made her a major character with kind of a dark side. Um, and I, I, at the end of the first civil war, run where cap gets assassinated on yes. the steps of the Capitol. Sharon Carter is the one that shot him. Right. And you're like, okay, well, where are they going to go with that? Yeah. Um, I guess the biggest question is who was she talking to on the phone? We can throw out a yeah. half a dozen things, but the one thing it probably isn't is Mephisto. <clears throat> it's probably not. No, Mephisto. I don't think it's Mephisto <laughs> and I don't think it's Logan <laughs> in Madripoor. No, I don't think it's Logan either. Um, anyway, uh, yeah, I think it was meh. One plug. My that wife, great. my wife loved it. Her oh, really? Loved it. She was like, "It's great." She goes, "That's great." I love Bucky. The only thing she had a problem with Sam's outfit was she goes, "Why is this top of his head exposed? Why didn't he have a helmet on or something like that?" That's true. And you went because <laughs> like, he didn't in the comic. I was like, "All right, yeah." Um, one plug I want to make for a movie we just watched on Friday it came out on Netflix called uh, "It's the Mitchells versus." Aliens or something like that? Yeah, the, well, robots. Or machines? Robots Mitchell, versus Mitchells? Yeah. Oh, shit, I can't remember the name of it now. I, it was supposed to come out in theaters, and then COVID hit. Yeah. and then, The animation uh, looks great. It's from the same people that did... Right, um, Spider-Verse. Yeah, the Spider-Verse, and from the same... Uh, and Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs. Okay. So that, that, that level of zaniness in a family comedy, and it... it <laughs> it hit us on a lot of different um, levels in that, like, the son is a big dinosaur fan. My son is a big dinosaur fan. Uh, Katie, the oldest, uh, it's, uh, yeah, Mitchell's versus the Machines. Katie, the oldest that's, like, going away to college, like, is an aspiring filmmaker and did, like, puppetry and stop motion animation and oh okay cool my daughter did the same thing her name right. is also kate so it, it just hit like some pieces right and it was just so damn funny was it good oh, i'll watch it then you are definitely gonna watch it I'm, i think i'm going to insist that you watch it because okay. it is it was just fun it was really good yep yeah okay well, so i will definitely uh definitely on the uh jump you know it's really hard right now at the age of two I'm talking about Gwen, my daughter. It's really hard to watch some of these shows. Like you can blaze through, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Shadow and Bone. And you yeah. can blaze through some of these shows. I can't. Like uh, there was, what show were we watching? We were watching a show where something really, oh, we were watching The Nevers. And yeah. all of a sudden, we thought our daughter was just doing something else. And she comes up to me and she goes, is he dead? And I was like, Oh no, <laughs> no, no. Like, you know, and, and it just, it, and not only that, like shadow and bone, that's something for me. I have to actually pay attention because they're Correct. using words that aren't actually like, like, it's not like, Oh, he's a magic user. No, they're called yeah. Grishas. And I need to know what that means. Correct. And I need to know who, I think his name is Pecker Robbins or <laughs> yeah, or something like that. Like I need to listen to this and understand this. And when she's in your ear talking to you, like, watch me do this. Watch me. Okay. Watch me jump on the couch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Watch me jump on the couch. Okay. And she just keeps going. It's like, okay, I got to pause this. I can't yeah. watch this. I got to watch her. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely in a different stage than you are. My yeah. kids like, yeah, my kids is like, they're watching all their own stuff. And, um, <laughs> We do force like no, we're gonna watch this show right. as a family. Like, and and it's it's not every night and it's not every show because I mean I remember having to sit down and watch what my parents watched all the time and they did yeah. watch like prime time and it was with us but Cheers and well yeah and you know dad six thirty every night dad had to watch Mash like yeah. had to and so and and it, you find out it's actually a really good show but not when you're eight yeah and so we let the kids watch their own stuff. 
And then like Monday nights, we watch the voice. Like we just really enjoy that, yeah. that musical show. Um, we don't watch any of the other ones. And then musical show. Yeah. The voice, like music oh, competition the voice. I thought you said the boys. Yeah. No, like, no, not... no, we don't watch the boys with my, with my yeah. middle school children. Um, no, we watched uh, we watched The Voice on Mondays. We were watching Superman and Lois, but okay. that kind of with COVID took a weird hiatus and turn. So we're now we're kind of trying to watch, trying to find what to watch for them. Um, but then for things like Shadow and Bone and the Nevers and some of the more adult series that we watch, you know, we wait for our kids to go to bed, and our kind of schedule is. Krista will go read her book for like an hour or two and just like alone time, like where she's yeah. going to decompress from the day. I play a couple hours or however long she's doing that. I'm playing video games mm-hmm. either by myself or online with some friends. And then when we come back together again, we watch one to two episodes of something. And like, like my kids don't watch Star Trek. So we'll watch, we watched all of Picard where we watched, I think around season three of discovery, Okay, you know, Things like that. And yeah. like tonight, we're going to watch, uh, we'll watch the Nevers and yeah. that new episode and then maybe something else. And then we go to bed. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much all the shows we've watched or yeah. have to watch. Yep. But or did you, do we, uh, did we talk about Mortal Kombat? Did you talk, did you see Mortal Kombat? Oh, yet? I did see Mortal Kombat. <laughs> <laughs> that I was watching that and I'm thinking, Ooh. oh man, this is just, like in the beginning, I was like, okay, there's something here. Yeah, that, that kind of prologue. That was yeah. good. Yeah, that was very good. And then it went downhill from there. I really thought well, when they're like, oh, this guy's the descendant of S- Scorpion. Yeah. I'm like, oh, so he becomes Scorpion. Like right. the spirit of his ancestor blesses him or something and he yeah. becomes Scorpion. No. Like that's his he power. Get, yeah. He gets weird armor from a charm bracelet. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, Huh? Yeah. Okay. And I, I, I looked over at Ursula and I said, "Is Cato the best thing here?" Oh, he carried she, that movie. He yeah, and she's like, that movie. yeah, and she's like, "Oh yeah, he's much better." And then when he's turned evil, you're like, "Oh man, I thought you were gonna be like the, like the." <laughs> and I don't know a much about the mythology of Mortal Kombat. To me, it was always just a game. I had no idea yeah. there were stories behind it. I had no well, idea there are, but um, it's. The basis of the story is that it's supposed to be a tournament where they fight for control of the realms. Right. There was never a tournament. No. In this movie. Like they no. never got there. It was right. just about the evil wizard Shang Tsung cheating. cheating. Yes. And all of a sudden it's like, hey, Earth Realm, Earth Realm won Mortal Kombat. I'm like, how? There was never a tur- they never yeah, they never got what, to I, the I point said, where there's a tournament. Ur- <laughs> You're right. That's what Ur- Ursula said is she goes everybody's dying like when's the tournament (laughs) i said i think this is the tournament yeah it's like when i saw jacks fighting whoever where he crushed his head yeah and i'm watching that i'm like well that's like that's a that's a stage right out of the video game yeah and i'm like oh he might uppercut him and he's gonna land on the spikes below that didn't happen but then i'm like is this the tournament like them taking the fight to shang sun's people but then that's still not the tournament i agree that's, that's everybody just fighting outside the tournament and essentially cheating i agree I'm like i don't get this i don't I, get this yeah i don't get this either um <clears throat> i didn't get it either and i thought and i did shut my brain down for this one like like i wasn't looking for rhyme nor reason or okay <laughs> i just i just went let's watch some people fight and probably die yeah. and the one thing i mean I tried rewatching it on Friday just to be like, maybe I missed something. <laughs> and I couldn't make it past where Stony Blaine's like, I don't have a mark. And Kano's in the background. He goes, wah, wah. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it's like, how did the director keep that in there? Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, I didn't like Sonya Blade. I thought she way overacted. Oh, God. Yeah. Um, I thought the other guy way underacted. Like, he kept playing dumb all the time like what's going on what's <laughs> happening i'm the what i can't do it now i can it's like ah oh. yeah like what are you doing here i i i mean 
I really wanted to like the film. I really did. Because the... I think you wanted to like the film because I'm with you there. There was something there. Yeah. And they had it. <clears throat> and then it just left. And this is where I'm thinking like, okay, they're going to learn their mistakes. And then in the sequel, they're going to make it better. And I'm still going to watch the sequel. I know I am. Well, the problem is this movie doesn't deserve a sequel, but because it's the only thing that really has come out, it's everybody come out. downloaded the shit out of it. And now yeah, they're all like, totally oh, yeah. and again, the actors, most of the actors, the actors where I've seen them in, in other things, you're like, you're a good actor. Like you're a better actor than what you were in this movie. Right. Yeah. Um, so when I'm, and I, I, even if it was, I was hoping for, even if it's bad movie, good Kung Fu, that, that I would be okay with that. Yeah. And it failed in the, the, the Americanized or made for an American audience failure of keeping the camera in way too tight on your actors. And, Cause they had martial artists like, yeah. Like any, he or uh, what's his name? The, head, the lead, Kane. the lead guy. Um, oh, I don't know whose name I can't Cole, Cole something. Yeah. But the actor, I'm going to look it up because I want to get his name right. Louis Tan. Okay. Like, Louis Tan is a martial artist. Like, oh, no, you and, could tell. And, and, yeah. and, I mean, a lot of those people, and I was really, and now that I'm looking at the cast, I was really impressed with McCad Brooks, the uh, guy who played Jax, because okay. he, he packed on like 45 pounds of thickness okay. for this movie. I read up on that. I'm like, is that him? Because I'd seen him before where he's usually really cut and ripped. Yeah. And he's like, I had to put on size. So he put on bulk. And I'm like, whoa, that's impressive. Yeah. Was 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 Lewis Tan supposed to be like a different alternate version of Johnny Cage or something? No, he's a he I they brought in and I don't know why, like I haven't been able to read this, why they did just a we're gonna make up a character out of our yeah. Out of our cast of 50 Mortal Kombat characters that they've created over the years, yeah. we're going to make one up that's totally new that no one's ever heard of because that's what people will connect to. You're like, no. Yeah. <laughs> you should like, have done somebody else. Like, what I didn't understand is <clears throat> Raiden, saves, Raiden saves the descendant, that little baby, brings yeah. it back to the temple. So how did it leave the, like, what happened after, like, how did it become this guy that has no idea what's going on in the world? Yeah, like, yeah, I don't... Like, I w would understand if it was Liu Kang that was the descendant, and yeah. he grew up his entire life, he grew up in the temple learning, sure. you know, that I understand that. Yeah, yeah. that would have made sense. <laughs> but, um, I think that character was made up so that that's the audience. Yeah. So just... every time he sits there and goes, huh? Like they have to explain what are you talking it. About? Yeah, they have to explain it. Ex speaking of explaining, <laughs> our plane flight on the way back. I watched Tenant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I watch it again. I have to. I have to watch it at least three or four times. I yeah. think because I'm, I'm trying to explain this to Ursula, and they always say like, don't they say like, learn it. Do it, teach it. Those are the three steps of learning something, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can't teach it. No. I don't know <laughs> inverted. I don't know, like, okay, I, here's the thing. I knew why there were two teams, the blue and the red team. Uh -huh. I understood that, but I didn't understand how that fit the plot yeah. to make me care about what these two were doing. I would say watch it again, probably read up some explanations. I've seen it four times. And I would say I could have, like, if you would have caught me, like, a couple months ago when it came back out on yeah. VOD and I bought it, or, like, right around Christmas time, I could explain it. I haven't watched it in a couple months. I don't think I can explain it right now. No. <laughs> like, it's left my head. No. Yeah, I'm, so, I was just, like, Ursula goes, what did we watch? I go, I, I don't know, but it, it was kind of cool, but yeah, I don't know cool. what we watched. Yeah, um, and I have some theories on that, uh that movie as well but cool well we'll talk about it one day yeah. but for all of you that haven't watched tenant watch it because yeah it, it's not bad well, but it's, it's, just... it's classic christopher nolan he's he's fucking with time with great characters and 
Yeah. Yeah. And he really makes you have to think. Like, yeah. and usually, look, I can follow, um, I can follow time travel movies. I can follow paradoxes. I can follow, um, multiverses. This one had me spinning. Going, yeah. Okay, I still don't know how you caught the bullet. I still don't understand how, how your gun's catching the bullet. I don't understand what's going on. Um, there was a, a fight scene where one guy's inverted, the other guy isn't. So there's Correct. this reverse, and it's cool to watch. Yes, very creative to watch, very creative. And I always appreciate Nolan's creativity, but his last two movies... Like I just still don't understand Interstellar, the ending, the final ending. Oh, really? Somehow behind a bookshelf. Of oh, this yeah. Shot. Oh, that's I don't cool. understand that. We should discuss that sometime. Yeah, we should. I don't understand. I, I haven't fully understood that. Other than that, I thought it was a great movie. Um, and uh, again, I think Tenant's good. I just don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> How many how many times can you sit there watch a movie think it was good and not understand what was happening? I'm oh. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. If I understand 50% of the movie and that allowed me to follow it, but I feel like I I couldn't really appreciate the entirety of the movie because I couldn't understand the other 50%. Well, and that makes sense. I mean, they didn't go into certain things like the machine, like Oh yeah. Who made it? Why did they, I mean, they kind of did, but it's kind of lost. I mean, yeah. by the end of the film, when they're splitting it up and you're going, wait, who made that? Why did they make it? What are we doing? Yeah. So, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So anyway, that's enough of movies guys. We're going to transition to football oh, because some boy. funny, interesting things happen for both the Greg's team, which is the green Bay Packers. And uh-huh. now again, my team, the Chicago bears <laughs> now again, your team. <laughs> yes, so, I know. It folks, totally sounds like I am. Uh, Johnny sent me a text of his wife video videoing him during the draft. He got so pumped up and so excited. Yeah. That I had to write back and be like, no, 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 no. That has to be somebody else because you're no longer a Bears fan. Right. You, yeah. You, uh, um, you quit your team last season. Yeah. She, uh, I quit my team up until <laughs> that the 12th moment? pick. Yeah. Of that moment. I thought, and all of us, I, it was the New York Giants were on the board. And I thought, oh, fuck. The Minnesota Vikings are going to get Justin Fields. Great. So now, you know, and, and I'll explain the balance of power in the NFC North and how it's it might dramatic, dramatically shift. Um, yeah. yeah, I was watching and I thought, oh God, that's all. To be honest, after actually, if I'm really honest, all teams really need is a franchise quarterback, and you have a legit shot to win a Super Bowl. That's how. That's what it seems like it's turning out to be because Minnesota's a quarterback away from a Super Bowl. You think so? Yeah, you put Aaron Rodgers on that team. You put, um, you put Russell Wilson on the Vikings. Yeah, they're mm, okay. That, that is a team that is consistently talented, and they just don't. They're not talented at the position. But anyway, mm. so right around the twelfth pick, I'm like, I think the Giants are going to go defensive, and all of a sudden, I see the Chicago Bears have traded for the twelfth pick, and I went, Ooh, no. Oh my God, no! This is gonna happen. I said, Ursula, because Ursula for years has watched me throw my hat at the TV every time the Bears pick mm-hmm. a running back, a linebacker, a defensive end. It's just they always usually pick somebody that you're like, what the fuck? Like, why would you pick that guy? <laughs> and this why? year they picked probably the second best quarterback. If not the first of this draft class, yeah, and I was like, "Holy shit!" <clears> now <throat> there is that other part of me that's going, "Oh, they're gonna fuck this up, though." They're gonna. Who, get him who's out the name there. of the quarterback again? Justin Fields. Justin Fields. Yeah. So and I did. Um, I did that for the sake of our listeners. I actually. Knew yeah. That. Sorry about that. Yeah. Well, actually, you know what? I've been looking at our listening. The people that listen, a lot of Illinois people listen to us. So. Yeah, that's true. So. Party on Chicago. I was I had a drink that night. I was like, oh my God, they made a great pick. I didn't even care about the rest of the draft. I was like, holy shit, we might have gotten the guy we've been waiting for for 20 years. Could be. Yeah. Could be. 
And we'll see. Meanwhile, so let's talk about your guy. Yeah. Uh, the night before, and I, this shouldn't be news to anybody, but the night before the draft, Aaron Rodgers is like, I want to be traded. I don't want to be here anymore. I'm taking my football and I'm leaving. And everybody was like, and here, here's the thing. And this is what shocked me the most. Um, so the night before my, my initial thought was, this is just NFL psychology. They're, they're saying, cause now every team, if Aaron Rodgers says, trade me to another team the night before the draft, every other team that would want him would be like, Oh my God, what could, what kind of deals can we make? So now they're wheeling and dealing, trying to set up packages and call people and do stuff rather than focusing on their actual game plan. Mm-hmm. That was kind of my initial. I'm like, that's why they're doing that. Or for those who needed a quarterback, mm-hmm. they were sitting there saying, okay, what can we do? Yeah. So, so that was part of my initial thought. Um, and like last year in last year's draft where the green Bay Packers, their first round draft pick was Jordan love a quarterback mm-hmm. And Packer Nation was like, are they stupid? Why would they do that? And it was like, you know, they were mad at Brian Gundekarts. They were mad at uh, 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 head coach. Um, LaFleur. 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 They're they're just pissed off at the entire front office and the coaching staff. They're like, you're screwing yourself. Why would you draft a quarterback? And so they were mad. This year, when... Aaron Rodgers says, I want out. Those same people are like, fuck him. Let him go. Big cry, baby. You don't want to be here? Get out. And and some people were saying that just on his reactions. And some people are like, good, let him go. He can't perform. He's taken us to the championship game twice, game away from the Super Bowl. He can't fucking close. You know, and and I'm just like, I'm like, these are the same people that were just like a year ago at the draft going, well, we got to keep Aaron happy to keep him here. Oh my God. And this year they're like, screw that guy. And I'm like, Oh, this, I mean, so many people did a 180. and to the point now, if you want to know, <laughs> there's a lot of 180 going on with this draft. My, it is my feelings in general. Yeah. What do and, you think about this? Oh, I, I, I want him to leave to watch the chaos happen. It's oh, a little you're a Browns fan now. Well, I'm not even that much of a browser. I don't even know who they drafted, but yeah. um, but just uh, watching, just to watch it, just to watch that shit show unfold, and it could be great for the Packers. Like if Aaron leaves and yeah. like that changes changes the salary structure, everything else. We bring in some great people. You know, I I don't believe that Jordan Love is going to be a terrible quarterback. He's not going to be Aaron Rodgers great. He's not going to be Brett Favre great especially not right away, but you know, Packers are serviceable. Yeah. I mean, Packers have had good quarterbacks for 20 plus years now. Yep. To be honest, Greg, you don't know what it's like to not have a good quarterback unless one of them are injured. I do, but like not too far behind me does not. Right. Like that's true. That's I true. I remember, you remember Mikowski. Yeah. I remember Mikowski. I remember even the guy that was after him. No, far before, before him. Before, before him. him. Yeah, yeah. whose name I can't remember. But I, I remember. Either. I remember the shitty years of the Packers. I mean, I remember them being the losing team, and everybody just hanging on to that. Nope, we won the first Super Bowl. First Super Bowl ever. We are first two. First and two. I, yeah, I mean that was the holding on to that legacy. Yeah. Just. With both hands, just yeah. trying to maintain that we're great. There are fans do it with 85. Yeah, absolutely. It makes sense. I mean, whatever. Um, but I want to I want to see that happen of like just the uncertainty of a team where now everybody's like, we don't have Aaron anymore. What do we do? And yeah. watching mm. that unfold. The old man in me. And I'm starting to I'm starting to either embrace this or just understand that this is what's happening with me. Is very much like you, like you diva. Yeah, yeah. And I I don't know if that's fair because Tom actually Tom got kicked out. They thought he was washed up. So Tom right. Tom brings a different story. But I've always thought there was something about Aaron that rubbed people the wrong way there is yeah he's that guy that even he would upset his best friend yes like 
I think, all right, we're not going to bring up his name, but we have a mutual friend where it's not common for us to look at somebody else and go, well, he's kind of an asshole. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. Right. And I think he's a, I think Aaron's a lot like that. I think Aaron's a lot like, like his best friends even sit there and go, dude, you're kind of a dick or yeah. dude, yeah. let that go. Like my God, you know, <laughs> when, when Favre's book came out and you hear about like, what was the beef between you and Aaron and, and everybody thought it was Favre just kind of not wanting to give up his youth to the young yeah. guy. Right. But then you find out that Rogers, like their very first meeting ever, he mm-hmm. walks up to him and, you know, Favre sitting by himself at a table, eating breakfast, reading the morning paper, getting ready for practice. And here comes the new guy yep. who sits down, kind of like slams his plate down. And he's like, hey, old man. Yeah. And you're like, fuck you. Yeah. yeah I mean, <laughs> and, we're and talking he, about testosterone. Uh, tes- testosterone. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, and I, I, I think you're right. He just rubs people the wrong way, and I think that ends up – like he's that one guy where he, at the press conference, he could have sat there. I Because I think this all boils down to him not believing in his coaching staff, and I've heard the latest now that Aaron wants the general manager gone, and then he'll come back. So, oh, shit. Yeah. yeah, so he's really pushing himself now. Yeah, And I is. think – I think they're going to say one of two things. Well, guess what, Aaron? You're not going to not play this year. You don't have any years left. You need to play as much as you need, like you need to. I've heard people say that Aaron Rodgers is then going to sit there and put up the finger to the both of them and retire for a year and host Jeopardy and make more money at Jeopardy than he would playing in the football and then go back to a different team. I um, think he'd make more money hosting Jeopardy. I think there's an actual like I I also know that if he went up to I mean, uh, thirty like million NBC or NBC or something, um, he could make a killing or at ESPN hosting Monday Night Football. Because huh. like, I mean his contract this year is thirty million. Okay. Um, I don't I don't know somebody I heard a radio personality so I don't know huh. how much they're talking shit or not uh, that he's that they said like he can go to Jeopardy and do that for a year while okay now all right whatever I don't know if that matters <clears throat> or not but <sighs> there's I... also this there's also this thing of okay have you guys given everything now there is a rule I heard that when AJ Hawk was up for uh like to resign he sat with the then general manager ted thompson and ted yeah. thompson said we're not going to resign you aj we believe we can um win super bowls with pretty little talent because we have aaron basically mm-hmm. so those real lean years yeah they ted thompson thought we have a superstar quarterback that can make anybody on this roster look amazing so that's why they never did the free agent thing. That's why they never did the, right. they, that's why they always did the homegrown, um, whole, and, homegrown players. And that's where, I want to say they were Guna Kurtz, Guna Kurtz, yes. the yes. new GM. Yes. That's where he's different. And a yeah. lot of people, when he came on, there was some nervousness, but a hot, lot of people were saying, no, we need that change in the front office. Yeah. And Aaron's not playing well with that. And I'm right. like, okay. Well, there was a, there was a saying, there was, oh, there's been, I don't know how to say this. When LaFleur got hired, mm-hmm. I heard the general manager brought Aaron in or called Aaron and told him, this is the guy we're hiring. And he said specifically to him, don't screw this up, Aaron. Don't be the problem. Yeah. I think if you were to say that to Aaron Rodgers in any context, knowing what I've heard and the way that I've seen and everybody that has talked to, talked about knowing him, it says that this guy doesn't lose. Like he doesn't, he holds on to grudges forever. Like yeah. he doesn't, he still remembers, I think the, some teacher that told him he'd be no good. Right. Like he still calls that guy and says, "Like you just think you think I'm no good now." Like he still like does shit like that. Yeah, that's I don't know. And this that's, is where that's, that's one of those cursed and <laughs> cursed and gifts. 
Like, I heard you know once I, mean? I read an article or heard or whatever, but somebody was like, we think Aaron could be on the spectrum because the way he is super smart, the way he approaches problems, the way he has some basic communication, like odd, not oddities. I shouldn't say that, but differences from the norm. Um, that they're like, yeah. And sometimes you're like, well, they bring up some good points. And that could be one of those things where if he's calling his old teacher to be like, look at me now, you gotta let that go. Yeah. Um, but like, you know, I mean, even the, the ESPN guy I was listening to was talking about like when they drafted Jordan Love, like they didn't call Aaron first and say, Hey, just to let you know, we're going to draft a quarterback. And I'm like, did they have to? In my opinion, they don't, but the new NFL players feel like they do. Yeah. Like we're going to draft a guy because they have to start future planning. Like they can't. See, that's how I looked at it. Yeah. Yeah. You got a future plan. And, and look, you can get a, you can say that that was a bad move or not, but before that draft, there was a lot of talk that Aaron is getting at the end. Like he's not, mm-hmm. I think there was a time for three straight years. He wasn't playing up to his standards. Correct. And then all of a sudden he just exploded. Yeah. Right. And, but even with that explosion, yeah. And as great as it was, we didn't make it to the Super Bowl. Right. But you made it to the NFC Championship game. You made it there two two years in a row. And we lost. Um, yeah, and you <laughs> lost. The first one you got your you just got run over. Your your defense was not ready right. for that team. Uh and I'm talking about the 49ers. Uh who also got a cool quarterback, so I'm excited about both teams. Anyway. Um but the uh the this this one, I think this one hurt because it was in Lambeau Field. And all Aaron Rodgers ever talked about was if I just get my team to play in the NFC Championship game in Lambeau, that's a lot. Right. Yeah. And it, he was made it some cold promises. there that day? Was it cold there that day? I mean, normal. I mean, okay. Like normal Green Bay at that time? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it, it yeah. wasn't like, uh, it wasn't like super cold, but. Right. But I think, and what really hurt was when that the now the second year head coach, okay, made a call to not go for it on fourth down. Correct. Um, and I think that has strained the relationship with that head coach and Aaron. Um, but I don't know. I it's don't know. Still, how, yeah, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it yeah, still comes right. down to him. I don't. I don't want to be here anymore. Okay. I mean, because now you keep him on. I mean, what happens? You keep him on, and he doesn't play as hard. Well, n- no, he'll play, but the problem is he's going to be a poison now. Exactly. He's Every not. Uh, listen, anybody that's a Green Bay Packer fan out there listening right now, I just want you to completely understand this point. He's not. You're not going to see him play in Green Bay ever again. It's not going to happen. You think he's definitely going? Like he's I don't know how. I don't he's, know how they could. I mean, if he wants out, he's got ways to get out. Yeah, absolutely, and he's going <clears throat> to take them because he's that. From what I've understood, and I'm not in the rooms with him or anything, but he's that guy. He's that guy with once his mind's made up, you're not changing it. Yeah. And once he put it out there that, and this is the other thing. His team puts this out there the night before the draft. That's strategic. Yeah. That is either, hey, San Francisco, you got the third pick. Trade trade me for that third pick to Green Bay, and we're golden. Because mm-hmm. I heard he had three teams he wanted to go to. The Niners, this, the um, because he grew up a 49ers fan, and they're a quarter. They're, I mean, if he's on that team, that team's going to the Super Bowl. Um, uh, Niners, uh, Raiders, which I don't understand and Broncos, which I understand the Broncos, but I don't understand the Broncos because there are two really good quarterbacks in that division with Patrick Mahomes and the new guy, Justin Herbert. So Mm -hmm. like, that's a really tough division. You want to go to a place where at least your division's a little easy, you know, I don't know. I don't know. So what do you think? You think he's going to be a Packer? No, I don't. I mean, and I hope he's not. I, I, cause part of me, for me, it comes down to, yeah, you're being a big baby. 
I mean, that that's kind of the first. Okay, part are of we being like, old? Partially, I, mean, I think partially, but partially is the anarchist in me wants to see it happen. I oh. mean, the, we that's we've really always. Odd. So you're rooting to not have him back just not, because you want to see a fire? Not, I want to know if rooting would be the word I would use. Where I, I'm just kind of the because I think if they try to work it to where he does stay. And you're right. He's going to be a poison in the locker room. He's not going to be a team leader. And what I've seen from his personality, I don't think he's going to play that hard. I don't think he's going to like try to, you know, light anything up or be a highlight reel. He's not going to take the chances. He's not going to try to make the the tough throws. He doesn't want to take the Packers to the Super Bowl. I mean, it because that's is that going to be the story? He has to leave and then he takes the Packers to the Super Bowl the, the next season? No. It That's could, never going to I mean, work. Think, of a, think of a big fuck you there. <sighs> I took you to the Super Bowl. I'm out. Well, fine. And then, yeah, but again, and I think, I don't think he's going to deliver on um, on that anyway, because I he think has. he doesn't. Uh, that, and that's my biggest problem when people want to tell me he's the greatest ever. And I'm talking to you, Josh Howard. Um, <laughs> he he's not. He's not. It, it, yeah. and it's 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 that personality has something to do with it. Yeah. OK, it just does. I'm sorry. He's without a doubt, though, the most talented man I've ever seen throw football. Really? Like, you put you put him over uh, Tom Brady? Well, talent wise, yes, but Tom has intangibles that are off the charts. Yeah. Like, there's nothing, not that Tom isn't talented, but I haven't watched a throw by Tom and gone, Phew, never seen that before. Right. Or I've never seen Tom make a throw and go, how the fuck did he do that? You know, mm-hmm. I've, I've seen Tom make a thousand throws that look so boring and so fundamentally perfect that they're boring that's that that's the one thing nobody ever tells anybody fundamentals look boring yeah yeah they, they do. do they look boring and you're like uh like uh, tim duncan nothing exciting a, about this at all yeah is a basketball player for the san antonio spurs he was he's retired now he's probably going to go down as one of the greatest power forwards of all time mm-hmm. and the, his nickname was the big fundamental nothing he did looked exciting it didn't look graceful it was just fundamentally perfect mm-hmm. and you're like Ugh. and that's where tom is tom's just fundamentally perfect he's not gonna wow you when he's gonna wow you is how the fuck did he pull that out in the last minute yeah. and it you know and how to and tom galvanizes people i don't think aaron galvanizes people and look it's it's Aaron is who he is. I think it's it's both a blessing and a curse. It's what got him there. It's also um, what has uh, uh, his his uh, that that chip on his shoulder mm-hmm. got him to be where he's at. It's also like his weakness too. And so, I don't know what to tell you, Green Bay. Um, I don't know. I I don't. There's a part of me that says it's your fault. There's a part of me that says, look, this is Aaron. Let him take his ball and go. Mm-hmm. You know, and you, uh, Green Bay will be around for years after Aaron Rodgers is a member, is like just a bust in, in Canton. But anyway, I to me, this is almost like deja vu. It's the same thing with Brett Favre. Yeah. They, yeah. Wanted, they yeah. wanted Brett Favre to get out of there, and he was like, no, I'm not leaving. You know? Or I think his biggest gripe was, well, you say I'm no longer good, then why won't you let me go to Minnesota? That's why I yeah. had to go to the Jets. Yeah. So, all right. That's it, man. I think we're good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I'm looking are. forward to the Greg wearing a lot of Chicago Bear hats next season. <laughs> I have should, one. Should be fun. packed away. Yeah. So... All right, guys. Thanks for listening. We are back. Hopefully, next week we have a guest. I'm pretty excited about. We'll Work, see. Get him working on, on it. Yeah, yeah, working yeah. on it. We're working on guests, so hang in there with us, guys. Um, thank you I'm for gonna, listening. Throw this out there before we uh, before we go off. Um, is there any for the people that do listen on a regular basis? Is there a profession, a you know, a certain individual or somebody that you would want us to get on the show, and then we like? We would work to get 
a t- either that someone in, in that job or does that thing or even just a particular person. Yeah. Like, we'll reach out to them and see if we can get them on. I'm working my tail off to try and get some sort of stunt professional on this. Yeah. I think talking about the unsung heroes of action movies, mm-hmm. action scenes are those guys. So, um, I, again, we were watching the, the stunt woman in that Nevers shoot that yeah. water scene. Yep. It's incredible. So, um, yeah, so that's a good thing. So anybody else out there that you want to hear us talk about, or, hey, you guys used to talk about this, or you guys, we don't want you to have this person back on, please let us know. We, uh, we'd, love to, uh, we'd love to make you happy. So for The Greg, this is Johnny. Everybody have a great weekend. Podcast out. We'll see you later. Yep.